In today's video, I'm gonna walk you guys through the process of creating your own digital checklist. Okay, so a lot of checklists floating around the interwebs, they're in a printable only format, meaning that the only way that you can check those boxes is if you print the checklist and then use a pen to physically check the boxes. But if you're anything like me, you might prefer a digital format of a checklist. Okay, so in order to create like a digital format, you have to actually go in and make sure that those check boxes are interactive. Okay, so in this tutorial, I'm gonna walk you through the two phases of doing this. The first phase is going to be the design phase. The second phase is going to be making those check boxes interactive, all right? So let's get started. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new around here, I'm Mariah from MariahMagazine.com. And on this YouTube channel, I typically create videos to help you DIY your SEO, figure out those annoying tech things, or sometimes I create online business tutorials like this one. So if you're picking up what I'm putting down, make sure that you hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on all of the videos that I have coming your way. But I think that's good enough for an intro here. So let's get into the tutorial on how to create your own digital checklist. Okay, so the first thing that we have to do is, well, actually design the checklist, okay? So I like using this tool called Canva. And basically what it is, is just it makes graphic design super simple, super easy, and I love that there's a free version of it, okay? And it's also really user-friendly, so like you don't have to go in and learn like Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator, anything like that. You can come right over to canva.com, you can create a free account and start creating graphics like this. Okay, so I will leave the link to Canva in the video description below. But basically, we have some options when it comes to getting started with Canva. Okay, so if you want to start with a blank piece of paper or whatever you want to call it, you can click right here a four document. If you don't see this in this section, you can just click create design right up here and you can go ahead and type in eight four and it will take you to the exact same thing. Okay, so I'm just gonna click on A4 document and that's gonna create a blank page here. If you wanted to start right off the jump with a checklist template, then go ahead and click templates on the left-hand side. You'll get taken to their insanely large wild collection of templates. And then you can search for a specific checklist template and we have 374 at the time of this video to choose from, okay? So you can scroll all of this and believe me, you can get stuck in a rabbit hole here. But basically what you're gonna wanna do if you're starting from a template is try to choose one that best matches like whatever you're gonna be creating this checklist for. So that re will really reduce the amount of time that you're gonna use designing it, okay? Also keep in mind that the amount of customizations that you have to make to this checklist depend on what you're going to be using it for. If you're going to be using these this checklist for personal use, then you don't really have to customize a whole lot because, well, it's just gonna be you using them. But if you're using this digital checklist for something in your business, whether you're going to be creating like a free digital download or like a free opt-in, something like that to help grow your email list. Or maybe you want to create a checklist template and then sell it on Etsy. If that is the case, then you might either want to start with this blank slate here, or you're gonna have to customize one of these templates quite a lot so that it fits your brand, especially if you're gonna be selling on Etsy. So Canva has this thing, which we all don't blame them, where you can't just use one of these templates and then make a couple modifications and then sell it on Etsy, okay? If you're gonna be reselling this template, you really should be starting from a blank page. If you're gonna be using this for an opt-in to grow your email list, you're gonna wanna customize this enough so that it matches your brand, your brand colors, your brand fonts, and things like that. And another huge reason for that is because a lot of users use Canva. 
So if you use these templates and literally just swap out a couple things, some of the users are going to see that like that it reminds them of a Canva template and then it might not come off as professional. OK, so I really just wanted to make that quick note. But let's head over to we'll just choose this one. So customize this template or honestly, if you're in the blank thing already and you're like, yo, I don't want to get started with a blank page. You can just search in here for checklist and the templates will pop up right here to the left, too. OK, so you can literally access the exact same thing, doing it two different ways. Sometimes the templates that you use aren't going to line up exactly with the size of the paper. So we might just have to extend that there, extend that same thing down here. OK, so basically you can customize this any way you want to. You have upload section here where you can kind of swap out this image up here. Let me just choose a photo. And then I'm going to lower the transparency so you can actually read it. I'm going to change the color of this whole thing to white. And then you can go ahead and change the fonts. You can change the size of it. You can change the color, all of that stuff. I'm not going to go over exactly like the Canva toolbar and how to use everything. But basically, this is how you could start with creating a checklist. OK, so I'm just going to hop over and show you guys one like an old version of my blog post SEO checklist. So you can see what it might look like after you customize. OK, so notice that my checklist actually starts on the second page here. And the reason is, is because since I'm using this checklist as like an opt in to grow my email list, I actually wanted to create like a title page so I could give this checklist a name so I could put my website name and then I have the actual checklist here, which takes up two pages. And then I actually have an about section here. OK, so if you're going to be creating a checklist and you're using it as like a free resource or an opt in lead magnet, whatever, you can totally do this exact same thing. If we were over here, like on this one, you could create a new page and then you can design a title page using the exact stuff like we can literally just copy and paste this so we don't have to redo everything maybe we want to center it wow that is not looking oh <laughs> it's because i clicked the wrong thing okay there we go then maybe we want to just Take whatever I wrote there, pop it in here. I mean, I think you guys get the point. But let me just do this. OK, so then we can move it up. So it's the first page so that you have a title page that gives your checklist like an actual name. This is also really helpful if you guys wanted to create like an actual mock up of whatever this checklist looks like. Creating a mock up makes it a lot more enticing for users to want to sign up for the lead magnet. OK, so I'm just going to show you guys a super quick example of what this mock up looks like. And I created the mock up right in Canva itself. This is the updated version of this checklist, but you'll see I have the title page and then I literally just use the pages from the actual checklist to create like a cute little mock up, which makes it really simple for people to see exactly what they're going to be getting. OK, so that's why I suggest doing a title page. It makes creating a mock up a lot easier and then always create like an about you or like about the author or whatever, always add these to your lead magnets. I always find them really helpful. Put your links to social media, put about like who you are, how you help, put your face, all of that stuff. So that as users are using your checklist, they can really get familiar with your face and your brand. And that really just helps with brand recognition. So I just wanted to go over a few things that I added to this checklist and how I created them. OK, so the most important thing is going to be this square colored in thing right here. OK, so we need a place to add the interactive checklist, which is going to be in the next phase that I'm going to show you. But basically all I did to get this 
was went over to elements and then chose the square shape. So you can choose the square shape that has like the pointy corners or the rounded corners. Honestly, it doesn't really matter. Totally up to you. Okay, so you wanna make sure that you're creating some area so that you know where to put that checklist in the next step. You can also, if you wanted to make it a little bit more transparent, by all means, go ahead and do that can literally change the color, do whatever you want to do here. Okay. And then the other interactive section that I added was a notes section. So in the next phase where we make this interactive, basically I'm going to make this a section where my users can go ahead and fill this in with text, take notes, blah, 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 blah. But in order to remind me to add that section and to make it visually obvious to users that this is going to be like a fillable section for them. I just went in and added uh, another um, square here and kind of just turned it into a rectangle. So you just do it just like that. And then I changed the color to gray and then I might have messed around with the transparency. So basically that's all you have to do to go ahead and to add that. Adding these colored sections of where you're gonna put these interactive elements just makes the next phase a whole lot easier. Okay, so let me just zoom back out. And the next thing that I wanted to show you guys here is how to add these links. So I added links just to help the users that are using this checklist get easy access to the resources that I'm talking about for the specific checklist. Obviously, you don't have to go that hard in the paint here, um, but I would definitely, without a doubt, add links to your social media. And then if you wanted to, you could make these links to your website. You could make these clickable too. I also added like a visual looking button type thing right here so same thing you would literally just go ahead and add that rectangle change the color change the size and then add text on top of it and then in order to make this text clickable we have to actually add the link here okay so there's two different ways that you could do this you could highlight all of the text and then come up here and click this little link thing here and then pop the link that you want people to go to when they click on that text, pop it in there, press enter, good to go. But that will only make the actual text clickable. But a button, just like a website, usually when you click anywhere on the button, it's clickable. So in order to get that kind of effect on this PDF checklist here, go ahead and select the background color and then select the text itself. And then we're going to group them together. And then we're going to go ahead and add the link. Okay. So if we do it that way, whoops. then the entire thing is going to be clickable, okay? So you can do the same thing with your social media icons. So you can see here that I went to elements, searched the graphics, found the graphic for the corresponding social media platform, popped it in here, and then I grouped both the image and the text together and added the link so that both the image and the text itself is both clickable. So that is a fun little trick on how to make your PDF checklist a little bit more interactive. Okay, so now the next step here is we're going to want to export this. So click on that top button, share download and we're going to want to export it as a pdf standard we don't want to export it as an image otherwise those links are not going to be clickable so we want to export it as pdf standard we don't have to do pdf print because well we're not printing this baby's digital okay so click pdf standard and go ahead and click download so the next phase of this process is making the actual PDF checklist interactive, making it clickable, making it fillable. Okay, so we're going to use a free online tool called pdfescape.com. I will leave the link to this in the video description below. But basically, you're just going to go ahead and click free online version 
and you're gonna upload PDF to PDF Escape. This is where you're gonna drag your downloaded file, your PDF standard file right into this box here and it's gonna upload to PDF Escape. Usually it doesn't take long, which is always very nice. So the first thing that we want to do here is click over to page two. This is where I started creating my check boxes, okay? So in order to make these actual squares legit check boxes so that people can click and add a check mark to them, we're gonna click Form Field and we're going to choose the type of form field, which is going to be a check box, and then click select. So then wherever you click on the PDF, it's going to add the check mark box, okay? So I like to click in the top left-hand corner, and then it fits in real nicely. So you can obviously change the size of this to fit it, but I like the standard size that it comes with. So I just click that, and then you click all the way down on all of them. And then we have this other notes section here that we want to make this fillable for our users. So you can click back on form field up here and a lot of people mess this up and they'll just choose text. Text will only create like a like a one line for people to fill in. What we actually want to do for a note section or for something that you want to give people multiple lines to fill in is actually choose text paragraph, okay? So then hit select and then drag your text paragraph as wide as the section that you created. And we want to see it like this. And obviously you can go ahead and mess around with the size after you clicked on it. But that's why I said to add the colors that you want to make interactive so that it's really obvious to you as you're adding these form fields about like how big to make them, is it centered, is it not centered, all of that fun stuff. So that's why I like to do that in the actual design phase because it makes this phase a whole lot easier. And then if you forgot to add a link back in Canva, you can add a link here. So you just kind of hover over the text that you want to make clickable and then you can pop the link right in there. And it basically puts like a link layer on top of like the actual text there, okay? So that is just like a backup in case you forgot to add a link somewhere on the PDF. But once you are good to go with this, just go ahead and click this save and download PDF. And then we can go ahead and we can click on this and we can just test it out here. So you should be able to click and unclick these cute little check boxes and you should be good to go with that. And then in this note section, you should be able to go ahead and type and add a whole paragraph of text. All right, that's it for today's tutorial. If you guys found this video helpful, give me a really quick thumbs up for me. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, what are you doing? Hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and I will see you in the next video.